Good evening. Welcome to St. John's United Church of Christ on this Monday, Thursday. As we gather to celebrate communion and to remember this night and what is to come for Jesus. I remind you also that on Saturday we get an Easter egg hunt that's scheduled and please uh, you may have folks who may be participating in that. And of course Sunday is uh, Easter Sunday and we hope that you uh, will be coming with us to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that uh, may you bring a friend. That would be a good time to come and join us for worship. So let's prepare ourselves for worship with the call to worship. Invite all our able, please rise. People gather around Jesus as his reputation becomes known from town to town. Let us worship the Holy One who creates, redeems, and sanctifies. Let's join together in prayer. With, With your, your grace, grace and love, love, Holy God, God be present to us and by your spirit, let us, us be present to you. Amen. Amen. may be seated. moment of our worship series invites us to consider a commission from Christ to his disciples to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, and cast out demons. These are the very things his disciples have seen him do and that we have sought to witness to for our own lives in this Lenten season of recovery. What will we do with this commission? How will we address the ongoing pain with hope and conviction, even though we ourselves are still yearning to be healed? Vessels holy and whole, 
broken, needing the one. Oh, open body and soul, he Jesus had been teaching, healing, touching, and transforming lives for three years. His presence in the midst of suffering had offered hope to so many, and yet his ways had also challenged the power of the privileged. As we have seen in our Lenten journey, his actions had crossed boundaries of stigma in so many ways. When healing was needed, no one was left outside of his compassion. And this threatened to upset the hierarchy, raising up the faith of outsiders and nobodies, mixing with folk outside or below his status. And he had taught that the last shall be first And that was not sitting well with the first of society, government, and religion. His popularity was evident the day he and his disciples set foot in Jerusalem. His Passover festival, those in seats of power who wanted to keep the peace, even an unjust, unholy, unfair, unseeing peace. We're all talking about the problem. Crowds where Jesus was teaching in Jerusalem were infiltrated by leaders seeking to catch him in the controversy. Time and again, Jesus answered with truth and with faith. Matthew's Gospel is particularly concerned with indicting the leaders of Jesus' own people for their role in his crucifixion. In this Lenten journey of recovery, we have confessed our own roles, the church's complicity at times, in the brokenness of the world. We have acknowledged our need to restore, to repair, and renew our holy vessels so that we might be able to create and imagine new possibilities, new solutions for the healing that is required to make the world more just and more whole. Together, let us pray. God of suffering, you take no delight in the destruction of your creation your people, our own broken edges, sharp and raw, contribute to the pain sometimes, especially during prolonged difficulty. We find ourselves struggling. We cannot manage it on our own, yet we try, forgetting to turn to you, forgetting to turn to each other, forgetting the power you offer, the commission you give, to turn our tears to balm, to use our broken edges to cleave new realities of justice and hope. It all feels overwhelming, and so we look away. Help us, healer. Show us our connection to your healing power. Forgive our disbelief. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. And in the silence of these moments, We sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. Amen. Vessels holy and whole, broken, needing the one. 
Oh, open body and soul, he, 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 come. Be assured that you are never alone in the struggle, no matter what. Jesus is on the journey with us. You are a part of the body of Christ, a community seeking healing for you, for me, and for all people. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you and breathe out with a relief of assurance, knowing that God forgives you, holds you, and loves you always. Amen. On this night, where we continue to remember the last days that Jesus had on this earth, knowing and anticipating the resurrection on Easter Day, we give thanks. For it is a gift of life, a life that is eternal. And there's a gift of life God gives us here on this earth and shares with us resources and ways in which we may show our, sh our faith. Let us then bless our offering for this evening. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, the God of abundance and life, we give you thanks for your many gifts and return a portion of our gifts to you. Bless them, multiply them, and may they serve you and the ministry that you have to share with the world. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now invite you to hear words from the 26th chapter of Matthew. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it were written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he took up a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it for all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is the word of God. May be blessed by the reading, living, and hearing of it. Amen.
come in these moments to the table of our Lord, remembering that Jesus gathered around a table long ago with his disciples to share with them, to break bread together, to be with them the last night that he would gather in that upper room. We remember, too, all the tables around which we have gathered Tables in which one way or another we have known the holy presence of God. And so we come here this night to know the holy presence of God here as we join in fellowship in partaking of the sacrament of Holy Communion. Let us pray. Gracious God, in the beginning you breathed life into humankind and your holy vessels were fashioned out of love until we shined with your light. Susceptible to shattering, we find ourselves broken, unable at times to remember your promise of repair. You remind us time and again that, though broken, we are held in your presence and made whole by your grace. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, remembering that he healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with those considered too broken for company. By the baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to the path of healing and recovery, delivered us from our despair and isolation, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always. In the power of your word and Holy Spirit, we are not alone. We remember that on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. In remembrance of the healing, life-transforming acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves to you. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, on these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for your healing spirit through Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, bringing healing and hope into the world. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, healing God, now and forever. And together, we pray the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Through this broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in new life, which Christ gives.
Come now, for all things are ready. Partake together of the bread and of the wine. Let us give thanks. Most gracious, loving God, you gave to us your son, Jesus, on this night to remember the gathering of his disciples, remember the pain of arrest and trial and eventually crucifixion. And we give you thanks for he shared this meal with his disciples and with us. May we be blessed as we receive these elements the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, and the many blessings which come through you. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. During this time, we join in a service of Tenebrae. There are many different forms of the service of Tenebrae. But this is a night and a service in which to remember the last hours, the crucifixion and the death of Jesus Christ. So let us prayerfully reflect upon Christ's life and death and upon our dedication to following in the way of Christ. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all of the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. And then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. And then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Let us take a moment, as Jesus did, to dare ask questions that come from the most broken places of our souls, our deepest grieving. It is in acknowledging what feels most broken, most cynical, most impossible, that healing can occur. We most must address both the roots of our ills in order for the balm of God's desire to enter us. You are invited 
to an opportunity of becoming awake, staying awake, to deepen the need within us and around us. Again, he went away for a second time and he prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words. And then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once, Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? which say it must happen this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Now those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward he said, and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And then the high priest tore his clothes and he said, He has blasphemed. Why do why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? And they answered, he deserves death. And then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you?
Now Jesus was sitting outside in the court. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she sa said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, Peter denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up again and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. So, <clears throat> vessels holy and whole, broken, needing the one, oh, open body and soul, he, 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 When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people were conferring a get together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said to him, what is this to us? See to it yourselves. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, Jesus did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. There's a song called Lament 
for a broken world. And we come this night knowing that our world is broken in many ways. And so I invite you to hear the words of that song. We lay our broken world in sorrow at your feet, haunted by hunger, war, and fear, oppressed by power and hate. Where human life seems less than profit, might, and pride, though to unite us all in you, you lived and loved and died. We bring our broken towns, our neighbors hurt and bruised. You show us how old pain and wounds for new life can be used. We bring our broken loves, friends parted, families torn. Then in your life and death we see that love must be reborn. We bring our broken selves, confused and closed and tired. Then through your gift of healing grace, new purpose is inspired. O oh Spirit, on us breathe with life and strength anew. Find in us love and hope and trust and lift us up to you. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner from the crowd, anyone who they wanted. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Well, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, had nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who's called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. And then he asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all more, the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters. And they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crowd, crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to be crucified. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man 
to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had him crucified, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three, build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. <laughs> Let God deliver him now if he wants to. Or, or he, for he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on darkness came over, a darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge filled with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Many women were there also, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered that it be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. All during Lent, we have remembered the healing acts of Jesus, the radical nature of the boundaries he crossed in order to restore wholeness, the desire of God that transcends all things. We do not stand in the way including the death of kindness, love, and compassion. In this Good Friday moment, we remember the death and burial of Jesus. Are there things that need to die within us to make room for resurrection in our own lives? Are there things we can lovingly lay to rest that are no longer needed. Indeed, that may stand in the way of our recovery of wholeness. What can you let go of in this moment? Old hurts and disappointments of the past that need forgiveness? 
Perhaps God has already forgiven you, but you cannot forgive yourself. What is embalmed in death is made new in resurrection life. This is what we believe. This is what we know because it is what Jesus promised. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, will live. Now go in silence, but not in despair. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. I am with you always. And may the Spirit hover, move, and deliver comfort and salve to your soul. Until we meet again on the day of resurrection. Amen.